This device can send messages over 830 miles away. It needs no phone towers, no repeaters, no global infrastructure, and uses less battery than your phone, and is incredibly cheap to get started. This is a LoRa device. On it is firmware called Meshtastic. Using that firmware, we are able to create an entire mesh network off the grid with no monthly subscription or any required licensing. So what is LoRa? LoRa stands for long range and is a physical radio that transmits in these sub gigahertz frequency bands. From 430 megahertz all the way to 928 megahertz, it sits inside the very high and ultra high frequency. The distinction is important here as the frequency in this case tells us how long that wave is. In LoRa's 915 megahertz band, that gives us a wavelength of around 33 centimeters or about a foot and three inches. The wavelength being this long allows it to overcome attenuation, letting it travel further than shorter wavelengths like those seen in cell phone frequencies. Taking Verizon as an example, their 5G tech uses 1 GHz to 39 GHz. Those waves are about 10.7 cm to a tiny 7.69 mm respectively. With waves as small as those, data is moving quickly but not super far without significant degradation. Think about your own Wi-Fi. When you're on the 2.4 GHz band, the connection is slower and can carry less data, but you're able to connect to it from further away. This is in opposition to the 5 GHz band that carries more data and much faster, but can't travel as far or through very solid objects. I'm not going to go into the deep end of radio physics here, but simply put, in general, the longer the wavelength, the further it is able to go. So while LoRa can't carry a ton of data and can be a little slow, it can go much further and utilizes less energy to send information. Currently, LoRa is used in a multitude of things, chief among those being monitoring systems. LoRa-enabled devices can carry on them numerous sensors to detect temperature, humidity, air quality, accelerometers, GPS trackers, pH monitors, etc. The benefit here is that due to their low power consumption and long range capability, farmers are able to use devices like this to look after large fields of crops, allowing them to monitor soil pH levels and the weather without having to run a bunch of cabling for power or data all over the place. Well, this is great. We have the radio technology to send information long distances. So how do we get everything to talk to one another? That is where the Meshtastic project comes into play. Meshtastic is an open source project that was started by Kevin Hester and acts as a mean to create long range off grid text message communication. Meshtastic works as a mesh network or a MANE. These networks work autonomously and can repair themselves if a node goes offline or becomes unreachable. Nodes constantly communicate with one another and try to identify the best path to take to get information from point A to point B. This differs from traditional internet protocol networks that generally depend on having some form of router, cable, switch, or bridge in order to get messages sent from one place to another. Essentially, with Meshtastic, there is no single point of failure in the network, no cables to maintain, and no dependency on a single router to handle message delivery. To get started with Meshtastic, you will need to purchase a compatible LoRa enabled device, which is listed on the Meshtastic website. In this, ensure that you're buying the device that correlates with your region. It's very important. In the United States, we utilize the 915 megahertz band. I personally have the LilyGo T-Beam and the LilyGo TT-Go LoRa 32 boards. Each of them have a small OLED screen to display information. However, only the T-Beams have onboard GPS. The cool thing is that you do not have to be on the same channel as another Meshtastic user in order to communicate or have your messages be rebroadcasted. In the Meshtastic network, unless you specifically said it otherwise, your LoRa device will take any messages it hears and then rebroadcast them, even if it wasn't the intended recipient. Think of a time when you were in a place with bad cell signal. In this case, your carrier may not have had a cell tower nearby that area, so you probably had a tough time utilizing data or making phone calls. But when you asked around, you found that your friends had full bars with no issues whatsoever, likely because they had a cell tower nearby. In the realm of Meshtastic, that's not a thing. If there's an online node nearby, it doesn't matter if you know them or not, if they're on a different channel or have a different setting than you, it will rebroadcast messages you send out, maximizing coverage. Now that is true in most cases, however, depending on the settings that users choose when setting up their device, they can actually make an entirely private off-grid mesh network that will only rebroadcast messages from those inside their network. So with that being said, let's make one ourselves. First, let's dive into Meshtastic's GUI and learn how to set everything up. Meshtastic is currently available on the App Store for iOS devices and is also available on Google Play or as an APK on GitHub for Android devices. To start, you will need to flash Meshtastic onto your device. 
To do so, go to the following link in the description, find your specific device, select the version that you'd like to install, I'd recommend sticking with the stable versions, and then plug in your device. Now go ahead and click flash. You should see a pop-up in the top left hand corner prompting you for which device you would like to flash. You might encounter an issue where your device doesn't pop up. If that's the case, ensure the cable you're using is actually carrying data as well as power. Other troubleshooting tips are, quit your browser and try again. Try a different browser, try a different USB input, restart your machine, go to device manager and see if your device is showing up. If your device needs specific drivers, install them. Use some Google Foo, appending your search with Reddit to see if anyone has run into the same issue you have. Now that your device is connected, hit flash. Make sure to read through the instructions here. If you're setting up this device for the first time, select full erase and install. This will ensure that you have a clean slate to work with. Wait a little bit and bam, we have Meshtastic on our device. Now let's jump over onto the phone and start the setup. First, you will need to connect to your device via Bluetooth. Select your device and get it paired. The device name will be listed on its screen. When you first set up your lower device, you will be asked for the region you are in. In my case, that's the United States. Again, ensure that when you are purchasing your device, you are getting the one that operates in your region's frequency band. And you can leave everything else for default for now. Within the device config, we can change the device role to any of the 11 different options. In general, you really just want to keep it to client unless you know for sure what each role entails. So now that we have a device connected, let's set up a private channel to communicate on. Go into settings, channel, primary channel. In here, you can set your channel name to whatever you'd like. Here, you could change the key size, but I'm gonna go with 128 bit as I'm not reusing this key after this video is published. Below this, you will see that a new key has been created. Copy that down somewhere safe so that you can utilize it later if need be. While we're here, you can also set if you'd like devices to have GPS enabled to share that data with other devices on the network. If you're wanting to use ATAC, which we will go into later on, you'll need to keep this on. You can also select precise location, which will eat more battery and utilize a bit more network bandwidth, but is ultimately, well, more precise. If you know what MQTT is and want to utilize that, enable it here. Otherwise, just leave it alone. If you have it enabled, all of your network traffic gets sent over MQTT servers, which means that all of your traffic is being made public, which kind of defeats the purpose. Now hit save and there you go. You have your own private channel. Here's the thing, take note when setting up a second device, at least in the iOS version, it will not subscribe with the channel key. At least in my case, that's what happened. So if that happens to you, go back through and paste in the encryption key, ensuring that you're using the right encryption. Select all the same settings and hit save. Now test this out by sending a message on the channel you created. When you send a message, it should appear on the other device and show in the app as acknowledged. To make things even more private, let's go into the device config inside of settings. As we talked about, there are other device roles. Selecting client hidden will make it to where our device only sends out important and necessary data to the mesh. Then let's change our rebroadcast mode to known only. This stops any data that is not ours from being rebroadcasted and brings our signature down just a bit more. As far as other settings go, play around with them and see what you can really do. I would recommend as a start to change the device name so that way you're able to easily identify which device is which. On the Android side of things, we can actually go a bit further as far as getting our Meshtastic devices to talk to one another. Unfortunately, this won't work with iOS at the moment, so you will need an Android device for this. On your Android, we will need to get ATAC installed. In most cases, you can just install this from the Google Play Store. However, if you are like me and have de-Googled your phone, then you'll need to find an APK. In my case, I found this one and downloaded it since it was readily available and didn't require me to sign in or anything. Once ATAC is installed, let's head into the Meshtastic app, go back to our settings, then to our device, roll, TAC, and then send. Changing your device over to the TAC portion of things will offload a majority of the functions into the ATAC app. After this, we're going to go to the official ATAC Meshtastic plugin. We'll download that and then install it. Back inside of ATAC, it will prompt you if you'd like to install the Meshtastic plugin, so go ahead and hit yes or OK. In the lower right hand corner, we can see the Meshtastic symbol pop up, which lets us know that things are working correctly. You can go ahead and ignore that no GPS thing here, as it takes a few minutes before ATAC gathers that information from the LoRa device itself. If you want to adjust some settings for the Meshtastic plugin, let's go into Settings, Tool Preferences, Specific Tool Preferences, and then Meshtastic Preferences. Here you can set which channel you want to communicate on, denoted by the number, and you can set if you'd like all Meshtastic devices on the network to show their location. Now, sadly, this is where things stop for me, as I don't have another Android device. I went so far as to try and utilize the Android Studio to emulate an identical Android device to the one I have to see if it worked, but sadly, no can do. So that was a partial lie. That being said, 
I went out and got a, another phone. So here we go. We're actually doing the dang thing. So this one's paired up with this one, and this one is paired up with Yee Boy over there. So that being said, we can try out. We have this all chat room right here. As you can see, there is no cell signal on either of these bad boys. Neither is there Wi-Fi. So these are not communicating on the Wi-Fi um, utilizing ATAC. These are purely just connected via the mesh test gap. Now let's give this little bad boy a Roger, a Roger Dodger, or a boop, 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 and then send. And over here, we should be getting that message. So all of that is happening on those lower devices, not communicating over cellular at all. And on top of that, in the background here, which I'm not showing, but I'll give you a little map preview there. Oh, oh, oh man. The 60 has been exposed by this little crease, but they are sharing their locations with each other. And they'll also share information like uh, uh, pointers or shapes on the map. So it's super, super, super cool. So um, that being said, let's get back into it. As I mentioned before, these little guys are superb at energy consumption to the point that you can keep them charged with a little solar panel like this for quite a long time. In my case, I used a Lilio TTGO LoRa 32 V2.1 as it uses minimal amounts of energy and in my testing lasted for over a year acting as a solar node without needing to come in for a charge. For this, I used a 5 watt solar panel as well as a 3000 milliamp hour 3.7 volt LiPo rechargeable battery that was terminated in JST. I created a 3D printed case for mine, but honestly, you could use any waterproof case that you can drill holes into. While doing this, I tried out the setting to set it as a repeater roll and it worked, but it was kind of finicky. In my opinion, I would just leave it as a client and then go through the settings and kill any power hungry functions in there. Like set the screen to sleep after a couple seconds or not to turn on at all if it receives a message. So why do any of this? Why is it important at all to being tactical, my guy? Well, in the six principles of survival, we have food, water, shelter, hygiene, security, and finally communications. Being able to communicate with others, especially those within your group, is vital for situational awareness. If there is any incoming threat, but you have no way to warn others because your comms are down, they're screwed. Whether it just be you and a buddy or you and hundreds of other people, the mesh network will adapt and keep everyone in constant contact over long distances. In my opinion, this is a really fun project and one that is incredibly viable for various use cases. But what do y'all think? Is this something you want to give a go or are you good with just sticking with some walkie talkies? Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, remember our sole objectives. Stop the killing. Stop the dying. I'll see y'all later.